Hello, this is Dr. Paul Cottrell, and I'm going to be talking about the Middle Eastern conflict in the eyes of an ex-CIA analyst who specializes in the Middle East. His name is John Franchi. Um, I believe that's how you pronounce it. And um, I'm not sure if he actually worked with, you know, worked as a contractor within the CIA or was, you know, direct CIA employee. I'm not sure. Um, but, you know, tied to that whole agency and analysis work in the Middle East. That's his specialty. Um, I've done these videos before where they have an ex-military guy or ex-CIA guy over at the Harvard Club and they talk about a particular current event. The last couple ones were about, obviously, Ukraine. This one is, is about the Middle East. So, you know, it was very interesting. I learned some stuff. I disagree with some of the things that he's saying. Um, well, let's uh, go through the notes that I, that I took. Basically, how it works is that about uh, 20 minutes, the guest speaker talks, and then they take questions. And then the moderator, you know, filters the questions. Okay. So um, what was brought up? Uh, early on in the discussion was West the West Bank. I didn't know this, all right? It seems as though, I think it's called Lion's Den. He went so fast I, while I was writing it. I think it, it, he said Lion's Den um, was the, the name of the group that attacked the settlers in the West Bank. So my understanding is Lion's Den is actually the name of the group of the terrorists. Um, now, K Qatar, this is something I didn't know, and probably you didn't know either. Qatar and, the, and Turkey are being major facilitators for brokering a deal for host hostage release. He, he, used the, he used the comparison, they're like the Swiss. You know how the Swiss are usually kind of like they don't take sides, you know, in the European theater, especially during World War II, right? Um, Qatar is the Swiss of the Middle East, or emerging as the Swiss of the Middle East. So they're going to be major players, especially when there's peace being brokered between Israel, um, the United Emirates, you know, and Saudi Arabia, as this region becomes more peaceful. Right. There's this, we're seeing an arc of, of development that's going to start to take place in the Middle East, right? And um, the centroid of activity is going to move away from the Western world. And, and move, um, if this works out, we'll move towards the Middle East. Now, uh, so Qatar was a major facilitator for the recent hostage releases. I, you know made the assumption due to American media that it was the U.S., it was, you know, the Saudis, it was Jordan and, and Egypt, and they may have had some play in this, but according to him, Qatar was a major facilitator. Now, the Chinese fleet, he said, is moving into the Mediterranean, not a lot of experience not a lot of um, deployment, but just, he phrased it as just to keep an eye. He doesn't think it'll escalate between the United States and China, but China is moving into the Mediterranean. Protests in the United States. This is where I kind of disagree from my observation in New York, okay? And that's my only data point. But um, he, he mentioned that protests in the United States. Now, Obviously, we have protests that are anti is most of them are anti-Israeli. Some of them are pro-Israeli, but most of these protests are anti-Israeli, pro-Palestinian, and in some cases, pro-Hamas. Now, what his concern is, is that, um, quote, observation is that many of these protests are being kind of hijacked by white supremacists, all right, and pushing this anti-Israeli agenda. I don't think so from my observation of what was going, 
you know, what was going on in the news um, dealing with the Ivy League schools, you know, especially Harvard. I don't think it was hijacked by a bunch of white supremacists. I think it was hijacked by a bunch of liberals that, that understand only one narrative, and that is the Palestinian narrative. And they don't care about the Israeli nar narrative, nor the, the changing of that whole zeitgeist in, in the Middle East moving towards a new temple, um, temple rebuild. Now, this is, so I don't think that the white supremacist hijacking of the protests is really a proper assessment. And here, honestly, you know, even though, you know, he was an analyst for the CIA, you know, you can kind of see when you talk to these guys and you go into, you know, go in, in depth with some, some of this, you can kind of see the faultiness of their analysis, you know? And I think that this is part of the reason why intelligence agencies like the CIA can get it wrong so badly. Um, to quote Trump, <laughs> badly. All right, so um, John also stated that the protests that were going on in New York were hijacked by the same group of people that did Occupy Wall Street. Now, the way he said it made it sound like the actual people protesting. I don't see that because you got to remember, Occupy Wall Street was in, you know, that was like, you know, uh, 2008 or 20. Yeah, 20, 20, 2009, really. I think it was 2009. You know, now you fast forward that, you know, these people are a lot older. They're, they were college kids that were doing this and they were in Zuccotti Park and, you know, and stayed there for a long time. And they got kicked out, you know, they, they camped out during the winter and all this. So um, they had these different encampments. They had one in Zuccotti Park. They, they did a lot of protesting on Wall Street but they weren't sleeping on Wall Street. And then there, there was um, around Battery Park, or just off of Battery Park, but still in, in lower Manhattan, right? So, uh, there, there's, a little, there's a little gated fountain and they, they made an encampment there. I think it's near the very tail end of Broadway. Um, as Broadway starts to move towards Battery Park, I think that, that that's the street. And there's, there's this larger gated area with a fountain, and then they made kind of an encampment inside that gate. Um, those were the two areas that I remember seeing during Occupy Wall Street. And then they had different protests that were going on around the city, right? Um, but I don't see the same kinds of people. You know, we use the term crusties. These, you know, these, the, uh, most of the people that we saw with Occupy Wall Street were, you know, they look like they were right, right from um, um, Seattle, you know, you know, a bunch of homeless people from Seattle and they look crusty. So, you know, we use the term crusties, you know, <laughs> but, uh, and almost always they had a, they had a dog with them. Um, so I don't see the same characters floating around in New York as Occupy Wall Street. I don't know what the hell he was saying. Now, there may be some funding that's taking place with the protesters for the pro-Palestinian and pro-Hamas protesting that's taking place in New York. Um, my understanding that was being funded partially by Soros. Um, and, you know, there may be some other smaller players that are, you know, hell bent on destroying America uh, that may be funding the, these things. That's, that's possible. But the actual individuals that were actually protesting, they're totally different than, than Occupy Wall Street, totally different. So I don't know what, you know, where he was going with that one. I think his intel was like off on that. So the white supremacists infiltrating 
I think partially maybe some rallies or protests. Um, but I don't think it's, I don't think that's really the issue. I think that there is just a liberalism that is so anti, so anti-Israeli and so pro-Palestinian. Um, these are the same types of people that want late term abortion. When you look at these people, they're the same people that want the late term abortions. They're the same people that are pushing for the uh, gender fluidity, the destruction of the family unit, the destruction of religion, the destruction of capitalism. These are the same kinds of people. They're, they're very socialistic and they're very, very, they're, they're very liberal. They come, they come right from that whole AOC, you know, um, the, the squad you know, group type group. All right. So that's, I disagree with John on that one. Okay. Now, he thinks, and I think this is a proper assessment. He thinks that it's going to be the high thousands when Israel goes into Gaza to clear out the tunnels if not the high thousands, it may be the low 10,000s. So 10, 15,000, something like that, of casualties on the Israeli side. Now, it's probably 5x, 10x, you know, on the Palestinian side and Hamas side. Now, what is interesting, I didn't think of this. He said that the infrastructure in Gaza, now he actually has been in Gaza. And I believe it was 20, I think he said it was 2014. I don't think it was 2021. I think it was 2014. Now, what is interesting here is, is that, you know, we keep on hearing about the water, you know, and Israel shutting off the water. First of all, it's a low percentage of the water is actually given to them by Israel. Secondly, um, many of the buildings have been stripped. The plumbing has been stripped to make the rockets. Now, this is intel you don't hear in the media. The plumbing in many of the buildings in Gaza have been stripped to be used for rocket material to shoot at Israel. Now, he does think that Netanyahu is going to be kicked out um, and that either way, he, because of the intelligence, quote, intelligence failure, um, that he's going to be kicked out. Now, it's probably in months, not in years. You know? So this kind of falls in line with what happened during the Yom Kippur War. Now, what is interesting is because of the 20 year, 15 to 20 years of development of the tunnels, some, not all, some of the tunnel tributaries can drive trucks in. And you can house small military units. So it's not just a dug tunnel, you know, just a small, small tunnel. These things are much more elaborate in certain sectors of Gaza. And you can drive in large amounts of material and have it trucked in. And people are actually living in them, in the, these, these tunnels. That's something I did not know. You know, and so it's been about 15, 20 years of digging and, and planning. Now, he did talk about the Iranian front, the northern front. Um, he said that it's estimated that there's about twenty to 30,000 re already re ready to deploy, 20,000 to 30,000 missiles in Lebanon to be aimed, you know, and, and shot into Israel. So when the northern front really takes off, um, you know, we're going to start seeing thousands of rockets happening to overload Iron Dome. Most likely what's going to happen, he didn't say this, but most likely what, what's going to happen is when Israel starts to invade the south, 
then you're going to have the invasion in the north from with these rockets and they're and they're trying to sway they're trying to move the center of gravity of the battlefield away from Gaza and and move some of the troops of Israel into the northern front because of this big wave now if this happens okay you know Israel is a very high probability they're going into Gaza and you know I'm recording this right now and it hasn't happened it's it's October 25th but you know it may be just a couple days before they do it now what's the problem is is that you have a lot of individuals that are coming as heads of state into the region to try to negotiate for hostages so there's kind of there, there's some buying time to try to get hostage released but it's also buying time for Hamas and Hezbollah to to get ready for their offensive or you know depending on how you you know how you look at it you know their their defense to, you know in terms of Israel attacking them but um but the point here that I'm making is, is that once the, the 20 that once Israel goes into Gaza and the 20,000 rockets go off in the north there's going to be another test that's going to be in the public um eye right and that is are you for Israel or are you for the terrorists? You know, it's like I've said before, you know, you can policy walk this thing till the cows come home. But there is a metaphysical thing that's taking place in Israel. It is not governed by humans. It's governed by, uh, these events are governed by a higher power. And we're all being tested and, and we're being put into camps or being put into groups are you for israel are you for a you know this 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 long-term peace that's going to arise from this or are you for short-term peace broker deals and more carnage more death more destruction down the road and if you pick the wrong side you're going to get cursed Right now, everyone is at fault. The Israelis are at fault. The Palestinians are at fault. The U.S. is at fault. The Chinese are at fault. The, the Iranians are at fault. Everyone's at fault. But where we're at right now is, is that there is a divine curse coming and there's a divine blessing that's wrapped up in the curse. And if you pick the wrong side and you start siding with terrorists, from my perspective, if you start siding with the terrorists, there's going to be a curse on that group. And the ones that are siding with Israel and doesn't hamstring hog tie, you know, Israel, <laughs> even though hogs aren't kosher, you know, if you don't, if you don't hog tie Israel, um, it, you'll get a blessing, right? But if you do, tie the hands behind Israel's back and prevent them from getting the job done, you are most likely going to get some level of curse. Maybe not as much as the ones that are full, full on the side of the Palestinians. But there's a, there's a divine thing going on here. This is not the normal cycle of violence in the middle east this is this is different this is different there's because you know i i went into you know there there were things that happened during rosh hashanah yom kippur and sukkis that did not bode well for the jewish people but you know this year is going to be bumpy but it doesn't mean that it'll be bumpy for the whole year it's going to be bumpy for sure, the beginning of the year, the Jewish New Year, right? So, and most likely it will start to get better. So there is this kind of curse that is happening because of the way the Jewish people have been, all right, in terms of following precepts of, of the
the Bible. But if you, as this starts to, to turn, right, and, you know, there's this separation of, of um, you know, civil, the civilized world and the ones that are the terrorists or the ones that are supporting the terrorists, it will be much more easy to, you know, see who gets the blessing and who doesn't. So, you know, I take an extreme approach to this. I don't take a, you know, a Westphalian perspective of maintaining borders for Palestine or anything like that. You know, I am, you know, I, I take this as this or this is something that's very biblical that's taking place here. And that the ones that are intervening, um, countries that are intervening to try to slow down that process is going to get cursed. And if we, if, if the United States keeps on going down this road of, of holding back Israel and not supporting Israel, when that, the, the, the larger war in the Middle East starts to take place, the United States will fall. This is our test. This is the United States test. You know, the United States has been tested multiple times throughout history. This is a test. And if we side on liberalism, we side on what the liberals want, right? These ultra liberals want, which is support Palestine, support Hamas, don't support the Israelis, then this country will fall. If we keep on trying to kick the can down the road as our enemies around the world start to rise up, we're going to fall because they're going to get more unconventional capabilities. And it's going to be harder and harder to be able to fight those. So, um, you know, some people disagree with me. You know, they would prefer short-term peace and not long-term peace. Um, I prefer short-term war and long-term peace. And I think that history proves my point of view. <laughs> um, from the biblical side and also from just you know, uh, uh, contemporary last 200 years, 300 years, uh, you know, how to deal with an enemy. Um, North Korea is gaining ballistic missile capability and increasing its armament, increasing its, um, its war, warhead capability with nuclear weapons. Well, we could have knocked that out in the 90s. And it would have been easier for us if we did. You know, hindsight's always 2020, but it would have been easier for us to do that then than now. Case in point with Iran, they have more nuclear capability now than in the 80s or the 90s. We should have knocked out Iran then. In the case with the Palestinians, pushing them out of the region to allow for the temple to be rebuilt and the destruction of the of the the dome of the rock the dismantling of the dome of the rock and allowing for the temple mount to be rebuilt is going to allow for peace in the world long term to get to that point is going to be disruptive but that's my thesis my thesis is it is basically, if you keep on kicking the can down the road, it's only going to get worse. The Temple Mount is going to be rebuilt. The question is, are we going to do it? How peacefully or how violently is this going to be? And if you keep on kicking the can down the road, it's going to be more violent. If you do it now, it's going to be less violent. That's my take on it. You know, um, Imagine if the United States didn't get into the war and, and Britain fell, all right? And the Nazi party actually took over the, the whole region. And let's say that they even knocked out Russia, all right? They would have been spread then if they knocked out Russia. But, um, and they solidified power within the European region. Eventually, you know, there would have, because they dug in, um, the war to be able to stop the, the Nazi party from advancing in the world and hurt America would have been much more violent 
than than what we had during World War II. This so this is the you know now it's you know we can't test that because we went you know <laughs> you know we we can't roll back World War II and go what if right <laughs> you know but you can kind of see my logic here is, is that if you don't stop it early, if you don't take the cancer early, it metastasizes. Now, you know, maybe Qatar is able to broker a piece where, you know, there's, there's uh, some sort of immigration that takes place of the Palestinians into the wider Arab community. Or maybe the Palestinians ends up end up being, you know, true citizens of Israel and they get, you know, mixed into the, you know, into the society. And it's just Israel. And it, there is no Palestine anymore. But the idea of carved out West Bank and carved out Gaza, I don't think is part of the master plan. <laughs> of the of the of you know the rebuilding of the temple so do we wait until there's more capability military capability on the enemy side or do we knock it out now you know and the united states is being tested if they keep on dragging their feet and they keep on worrying about you know what to do with iran it's going to get worse and it's going to be the fall of the roman empire that's my take on it so um you know, I'm, I take a very uh, a tough stance on this. I, you know, I'm, um, so that's my take on it. So, thank you for watching this. I think that I provide a little bit of uh, a unique perspective. You know, I don't mouthpiece. I don't, you know, repeat just the media. You know, the pro-Israel side only, because I think Israel has done a lot of things. And I'm definitely not pro-Palestinian. Um, and, um, you know, I have this, this unique perspective. This is not events that are guided by humans. These are events that are, that, that in this case, this is an event that seems to be divinely pushed. And people are making mistakes in terms of being on the right side to get the blessing. And America is governed by a bunch of crazy liberals. And until we admit to that and solve that problem, there's cracks in the foundation of America, the foundation of the United States. And those cracks need to be fixed or we're gonna see the fall of the Roman Empire. Please subscribe to my three channels on YouTube. I have the descriptions and links below this, this video and all my videos. Um, and uh, I also have three other channels, Brighton, BitChute, and Rumble. The links are in the description. And please go to my store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. You can donate on my homepage at the very bottom through Stripe or PayPal to help cover my, my news, uh, help support my news coverage. And then you can also donate on Buy Me A Coffee and support me on Patreon. Go to Patreon, subscribe for a nominal fee. You, you know, can help support my news coverage. So those are many ways to support my work especially if you're international viewer i have a lot of international viewers so you can't get the products that i offer on my store so if you could donate that would be a way to help you can donate again on my website the-studio-reykjavik.com link is in the description and um you know donate through stripe or paypal or you can donate through buy me a coffee the link is in the description of this video or be a subscriber to my Patreon channel, link is in the description. For the ones that are domestic in the United States, the all 50, all 50 states, I, I sell health products. 
and have a anti-aging protocol. Those health products I'm gonna show um, are just a few that you can purchase. I have a lot of products in my store that you can browse through and take a look at. But one product here that I take every day to neutralize pathogens is Health Max 35. 35 meaning uh, this is structural nano silver. This has 35 ppms, which is parts per million. I take it every day with a teaspoon. A teaspoon, it's a liquid, teaspoon of it a day. I swish it in my mouth for about 20, 30 seconds and gargle it for about 20, 30 seconds, and then it just swallow it. What you're doing is you're neutralizing pathogens in your oral cavity and down your esophagus. I have a, a great product. It's the ashwagandha root product. And what this does is it controls your blood glu glucose levels. And by doing that, you're going to be reducing that inflammatory response by having too high of a glucose level. Vitamin C, which is an antioxidant, but it's also a, a factor in um, de developing new skin and in improving the dermal layer. Resveratrol, a great antioxidant. It also helps to get rid of senesce cells. When you get rid of senesce cells, then what happens is that your tissue will start to repopulate from the adult stem cell and um, the average age of the cell will actually go down because the telomer lengths will be longer. So this product is getting rid of, it does two, this, this product does two things. And resveratrol is known to be an anti-aging kind of compound. This is a compound from um, grapes and the, the What is it called? The, um, the skin of the grape, right? So it's been known to slow down aging. But the reason why is that it's a good antioxidant, better than vitamin C. But it also helps to get rid of the senesce cells. And the senesce cells, they reach a certain point when the telomere lengths get short because of division. And the cell divides, it'll get to a certain length and stop dividing and, and, and not pop toes. So they just sit there. Well, you can get rid of the senesce cells by taking the resveratrol. And what will happen is, is these senesce cells will drop off. And then in certain tissues that do have adult stem cells, what will happen is, is that they'll start to repopulate that tissue with younger cells because the telomere lengths are going to be longer. Now, chronologically, the tissue is your biological age, but molecularly, the age of the tissue is based on the telomere length. So this is the reason why you can actually slow down your aging process. And you can't roll back the clock to, you know, to from 50 to 20 years old or from 50 to 15 years old, right? But you can slow down the aging process. And... By slowing down the aging process, the, the body is healing and you're actually, you're, you're looking younger and younger as you are chronologically getting older. Another structural silver product that I have is the silver gel. This product is great for putting it on cuts, scrapes, abrasions, bug bites. It'll speed up the healing process by, by a third. And it is a great topical for improving skin health. So if you put this on your skin right before you go to bed, all right, every day, and you take 64 ounces of water, filtered, get rid of the fluoride in your water, but you drink 64 ounces of filtered water and you take the vitamin C I just showed you, and you take the collagen that I sell in the store, then this will improve your skin, that the skin health will start to improve. Now, I also have a structural nano silver soap. Um, actually, I think I, I have five different types, different scents. This one happens to be oatmeal, but I have lemongrass and peppermint and charcoal tea tree. I have a structural nano silver toothpaste. This is the best 
toothpaste that you can buy, right? Way better than Alex Jones's toothpaste. Dr. Paul Cottrell sells the best toothpaste and way better than Alex Jones's. So help support Dr. Paul Cottrell and purchase, you know, a bunch of tubes of, of, of the toothpaste. It'll whiten your teeth, it'll freshen your breath, it will neutralize pathogens, reduce the plaque, reduce the, the, the gum inflammation, and reduce cardiovascular disease. Because there is a correlation between oral hygiene and cardiovascular disease. It's not the only determining factor of cardiovascular disease, but it is a, it is a factor. Another thing to improve your cardiovascular health is to get the omega-3 that I sell on the store. By taking omega-3, you're going to improve your cardiovascular um, lipid profile and, and move towards you know, a, a healthier heart, a healthier vascular system. Now, I have, uh, I have a, a, a method. What I do, part of my protocol, is I take D3, K2, MK7. K2 is a type of vitamin, and there's two types of molecules, an MK4 and an MK7. But what you want is the MK7. I do not sell K2, MK7. But what, what I do sell is the D3. So what you do, if you want to improve your cardiovascular health, take the toothpaste, use it every day, right? Use every day the omega-3 um, supplement that I offer. Take the D3 that I, that I offer. Get K2, MK7. Take the turmeric and the ashwagandha and the C60. And what you will notice is that you will improve your flow through your cardiovascular system because you're reducing the plaque buildup. You're reducing the chance of additional plaque and you're slowly getting rid of plaque. You can't get, of, you can't get rid of um, the, all of the plaque, but you can reduce it. There was a study that, that took place with scanning the, the carotid artery and there were individuals that had more than 50% blockage on both sides, right? And this is a, a, a major flow to your brain, right? And what happens sometimes is that that uh, plaque could break off and you can have a stroke. But also it could be so built up that you, you know, this is, you, you might have less blood flow and produce ischemic problems, right? Most ischemic problems are more at a smaller blood vessel level, but your carotid can build up it, with the, this, this plaque, right? Well, they found that when you take K2, MK7, D3, and metformin, it reduced the plaque. Well, metformin is a controlled substance. You know, you need a prescription, but you can, you can mimic it. And the whole idea of my protocol is this. You get plaque because you have inflammation that creates a little tear in the intima of your blood vessels. You reduce that tear by taking the turmeric and the ashwagandha. It reduces that inflammatory response, right? So you're reducing the chances of tearing, right? In addition, the LDL gets into the tear and starts to oxidize. The C60 prevents the oxidation of the, the LDL. When you're reducing the oxidation of the LDL, you reduce the number of macrophages that are eating the oxidized LDL, turning into foam cells that turns into plaque. So this is the reason why the C60 is so important to reduce the LDL oxidation. On top of it, um, you know, you're adding in the D3 and the K2 and K7. And over time, what happens is it starts the plaque. But not only are you reducing additional plaque, but you're we, you're, 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 the plaque slowly starts to go away. And this is what they found with that, that research using metformin, K2, MK7, and D3, that they, when they scanned before the treatment, they had more than 50% blockage and then it went less than 20%. All right. So, you know, 
again, it goes back to proper diet, proper exercise, proper supplementation, proper sleep, proper mental, te- you know, mental challenging, meaning reading, writing, talking to people, challenging your brain on new subjects. These are all things that you can do to improve your health and, and, and increase your longevity. You're not going to live forever. It's not possible. And you can't, you know, be a 60 year old and turn into a 10 year old, you know, but you can improve your health and improve your immune system. Now, if you follow what I'm saying, because of the things that I have learned over time, you know, either in academia or, you know, through my own um, journey through this protocol that I've been playing around with since I was 16 years old, um, you'll learn a lot. Uh, of what I'm saying. And the ones that follow my protocol, they say exactly what I've been saying from day one. I can't believe on the benefits that this protocol does, but you got to follow it on a regular basis. You know, so I just gave you the recipe on reducing cardiovascular disease. You know, instead of getting on statins and getting on you know, uh, you know, blood thinners and heparin and warfarin and, and and, um, um, you know, propranolol and, and, you know, all these beta blockers and alpha blockers and all this stuff, right? If you attack the problem early, you aren't going to need all this medication to treat a heart attack or treat the cardiovascular disease that you have. Same issue on being able to get rid of the problem, the, you know, early on in the international, you know, with your international terrorism, get rid of the problem now before it turns into a bigger problem. The same thing in health, attack the problem early and you won't go down the road of needing to be on medication for the rest of your life. And believe me, treating cardiovascular disease at the end of the timeline, because you didn't take to do proper supplementation and proper diet and exercise, is far more expensive than doing it in front of the timeline, early in the timeline, when you're taking care of your health by proper diet, proper exercise, proper supplementation. The average person starts their cardiovascular disease path towards heart failure at age 15. Let me repeat that. Age 15 in the United States, the average person, male and female, starts their cardiovascular disease path towards heart disease and towards heart failure at age 15. The yellow streaks that start to develop in the cardiovascular system is happening when you're in a t- as a teen. And it starts to ramp up and starts to give you the high blood pressure and all that stuff 25 years later. So it's not, oh, all of a sudden I have cardiovascular disease when I'm in my 30s. No, you started it in your teens. And the diet that's out there with teenagers now and even younger, you know, pre-teenager levels, it's, it's through, I mean, it's just the, the, the diets are so poor and so high in, in, in um, you know, saturated fats and, and, and uh, 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 high glucose levels. This is why it's so important to be taking the ashwagandhas. You know, if you don't pay attention to me, you're going to pay a lot more money being on, on statins and beta blockers and, you know, blood thinners. Trust me. I have an all natural deodorant that is made from the Himalayan essential oils. All right. Very high quality product. This is made by Rainbow Herbals. I have it in citrus scent for this deodorant. I also have it in peppermint tea tree. Um, so, you know, please get a bar of this. It's high quality. It helps with detoxification. And, you know, obviously you're, you're going to be using it as a deodorant. So you don't smell like a crazy liberal. I also have structural nano silver lozenges. I sell them in sweet menthol and green apple. I'll also be getting shortly two new flavors to add to the store. I sell a multivitamin. You need 
to get this multivitamin. Why? Because you need cofactors for proper metabolism. Proper metabolic pathways are dependent on cofactors, and those cofactors are vitamins and minerals. So get this, and it's going to be it'll help you, you know, for this whole anti-aging protocol and it'll improve your health. D3, as I mentioned, it'll help to get uh, higher absorption of calcium. You know, we're we're short on D3. Most people are short on D3. Higher doses of D3 will improve with light resistance training problems with joints. People that have, have osteoarthritis, right? They can improve, especially because of a sports injury or overuse of that joint because of uh, that they used to be in sports. Taking a higher dose of D3, drinking, drinking um, milk, you know, to get your calcium and doing light, light resistance training on the, the sore joint area every day for about seven to nine months will actually improve and remodel the matrix of the cartilage. And you also want to take collagen. And what will happen is, is it will help with remodeling because that resistance training is, are, is, is telling your body, redeposit this calcium to, to, um, to remodel that, 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 that area and to help, you know, rebuild it. And it, it, it will get painful at the beginning, like the first two months, if you're doing this, I did this because I used to do triathlons and I had arthritis in my legs and my, and my elbow, um, in my wrist, you know, but what I did was over a seven month period, I took about, uh, it was 20,000 units of this. This is 5,000. So I, I took 20,000 over a seven, seven, seven month period. Um, but I didn't take it all at once. I took it out throughout the day. All right. I did light resistance training. I drank two glasses of milk, um, like 2% to get the calcium. This is absorbing the calcium and helps with the remodeling. And then the light resistance training and taking the collagen. And then what, what happens is over that seven month period, you start to get less arthritis all the way to the point where the arthritis goes away. All right. Um, this is something that Dr. Group has talked about, you know, with uh, professional athletes and using D3 and higher, you know, higher doses of D3 to help remodel the joint. Um, it can be because you're remodeling it there is pain in the first two months. So you, you have arthritis, you're trying to fix it. You may have more pain in the first two months, but right after that, it starts to abate and then all of a sudden it goes away. You know when to stop when you start having, you know, some sort of, uh, because if you take too much D3, it can be uh, neurolog, there, there can be some toxicity that, that, that happens. The moment you have like brain fog, from taking too much D3, you stop, all right? That's how you know that there's the time that you're reaching for your body, for your, because some people, they, 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 they have more muscle mass, they have more, they may have more fat, they, you know, they're taller, whatever, right? So, you know, for my particular dimensions, weight and height and, and you know, and um, muscle mass and, 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 and fat content, 20 units, uh, uh, 20,000 units per day for seven months was the, the, that sweet spot. Some of these, you know, larger athletes, they have to have a larger dose. Smaller people would need a smaller dose. So it depends on where your, your BMI is and BMI. It's not just BMI, but it's BMI muscle, BMI fat, right? There's two different types of, you know, you can be high muscle content, low fat, but have a high BMI. Um, so there's, there's, you know, that kind of play to it, but you know, if you're taking too much, if you start to feel a little bit kind of brain fog and then you back off the, the dosage. But the point here is, is that you can remodel osteoporosis or, or osteoarthritis, not osteoporosis. Um, you can 
improve your osteoarthritis by following this. What I did, it was taking higher doses of D3, taking calcium, you know, through milk, and um, you're, you're uh, taking the collagen and your light resistance training, not heavy. You're going to hurt the joint if it's heavy. It's very light resistance training, and it's just enough to start to perturbate the joint and, and the, the bone and the cartilage, um, the tendons, the ligaments, right? Just enough to strengthen it. And to, you know, to send those growth factors to that area to remodel. So what's going to happen is this, you know, there's going to be a combination of osteoclasts and osteoblasts working together to remodel. It takes for me, it took seven months. I, um, Dr. Group, you know, dealing with professional athletes, you know, that had a tennis elbow, you know, that were professional tennis players, you know, they they were at higher doses of D3, and it took nine months. So it just depends on the severity and, you know, and, you know, how, how high of a dose you're going, lower doses may take a little longer, higher doses may can be a little bit shorter, but, um, I just gave you two great ways to stop, to, to, to re to, to undo osteoarthritis and cardiovascular disease in this video. Okay. So a turmeric. This is a great product, brings down that inflammation, right? and it's part of my anti-aging protocol. Bring down the inflammation, bring down the reactive oxygen species, neutralize pathogens, and you're gonna improve your immune system. Right? And this was one of the, the ingredients to lower the inflammation at, a car, at the cardiovascular level. But not just that, you're lowering the inflammation you know, at the whole body level, right? If you take this before you work out, you're gonna recover faster. I have a powdered probiotic. I also have a capsule one made by Amio. But what I do is, is I take this powdered probiotic. I mix it with hummus. I have homemade hummus. Um, I mix the powder in the hummus with the, the, um, with lignans, right? Lignans is to help improve your immune system and your hormonal system, right? So that's lignans, and it's powder. And then I also mix it with the probiotic, which helps with the gut biome. And I mix it in my hummus. You can make a smoothie with these or, you know, however you want it. You can just mix it with water. You know, some people just mix it in water and just drink it. I uh, just, you know, it's, for me, it's just easier just to mix it in hummus. But, um, you know, taking a, a, a good probiotic like this one is really important to improve your gut biome. Now, by improving your gut biome, you're gonna improve your metabolic um, um, communication between your gut and your liver. It's also gonna improve your um, mental health because there is a correlation between mental health and actually gut health. And then um, uh, energy absorption, you know, food absorption is gonna improve when you have a good gut biome. So. And then to improve, you know, your immune system and your hormonal system, you take the lignans, both in powdered form. I also have a great product that improves your mental clarity, all right? To remove the brain fog, take this product. If you need to concentrate on school or work, you know, you have, you, you have a, a very mentally tasking job take this what i do is i take one in the morning and one mid-afternoon you know some people only take it in the morning you know it just depends on you know what you need but this removes that brain fog and what it's doing is, is it's helping you to keep those neurons firing and keep those dendritic connections intact so this is another part of the protocol to be able to keep that brain active so take this. It's way better than Brain Force from Alex Jones. These two products here are way better than anything that Alex Jones has. All right. This toothpaste and this clarity factor is way better than Brain Force and then his silver blue or whatever he calls it. So to help Dr. Paul 
you know, you know, do videos and, and, and explain the, the nuances of the Middle East conflict, go to the store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and buy the health products, follow the protocol. It's not just making, a, it, it's not just um, st stocking up a store with a bunch of products. If you listen to me, I just told you how to reduce cardiovascular disease. If you listen to me, I just told you how to improve your gut health. If you listen to me, I just told you on how you know to slow down that whole aging process. There's some people that are trying to copy me in a way, you know, by just you know putting a couple products on their store that are their health products, but they have no idea on how they work, and they have sure as hell have no background in in being able to mix and match these things so they're synergistic to actually see that you're aging slower, right? Like for example, I look a lot younger than I am. Why? Because I follow this protocol, right? And I've been doing it for a long time and I've been tweaking it as, you know, different products at the market. But, um, you know, take my advice. People, when they get older, their pancreas has a, it gets overloaded. It doesn't work as well. The pancreas secretes enzymes to break down proteins, lipids, and carbohydrates. This product is a supplement, a digestive enzyme complex that helps to reduce the load on your pancreas. This is important when you get older because your pancreas isn't going to be working as well. Not only that, if you work out, you need to refuel your body. So take this to, re to help to refuel the body and not have so much load on your pancreas. So this can be used as a supplement for people that you know, do you know, intense workouts, maybe weightlifting or a marathon running or a triathlon or, you know, or, or maybe um, semi-pro athlete or um, you know, they're a football player or crew you know, whatever, or you're older and you, you need to, you need a little bit of help to be able to digest. And this works well with this probiotic, right? You know, when you don't have a good gut biome and, you know, you have problems with, the, with the, the, the metabolism of the gut, you're not going to absorb energy as well. And you're going to get, you're going to get worn down and you're gonna get sick. So you improve your gut and you improve the actual breaking down of the proteins, the lipids and the carbohydrates. And you're gonna actually get that, that energy, right? And you're gonna be able to boost up that immune system. You're gonna be able to have that body heal, especially if you're like chronically, people that we were talking about osteoarthritis, you know, osteoarthritis sucks. I mean, it hurts all the time and it sometimes hurts more because of the weather, right? But I just told you how to get rid of it, right? When you're chronically in pain, you know, it kind of wears down your immune system, right? And, you know, you, you're, when you're, when that inflammation is, is chronic, you know, you're just kind of worn down, right? Especially over years, you know, five years of this or 10 years of it. So, it's important to try to attack all these systems and improve them. Gut biome is a, is a very important system to make sure it's in homeostasis. So take the probiotic, the powder form, and also the digestive enzyme complex. And then again, you know, the lignans, which also helps with the immune system and the hormonal health, all right? So those are just some of the products I have on the store, the-studio-reykjavik.com. I've explained to you how to package them together in such a way where you can reduce cardiovascular disease, improve your gut, your gut health, improve your mental clarity, right? And your mental acuity and slow down that aging process. C60, is a very strong antioxidant. I sell it in coconut oil or avocado oil in two ounce, four ounce, and eight ounce. 
And what that will do is it'll bring down that reactive oxygen species, boost up the mitochondrial health, and allow those cells to be able to function at a, at a higher level and improve your, your immune system. And by doing that, it'll also improve your neural health because it's, it's improving, improving that mitochondria. And you need that mitochondria to produce that ATP to be able to get those things firing. And what's important in the mitochondria is the electron transport chain. If you take the B complex, the, the B vitamins like B1, B2, B3, B4, and B5 are important for the electron transport chain, which helps with producing the ATP. So when you couple all these things that I've been, that I've been telling you, that I sell in my store, the only one that I don't sell is the K2. But if you do all of this, you're gonna improve a lot of your systems and you know, you're tacking it at, at, at so many angles that you're, you're really gonna take off in, in terms of you know, improvement of your health and you know, improvement of your immune system. This is the reason why when people go, well, if I just take D3, it's not working for me. Or if I just take, you know, uh, uh, digestive enzyme complex, you know, I don't see a big improvement on my anti-aging or my, you know, health in general. Because you have to couple these things with, you know, at different modes. Again, it's neutralized pathogens, reduce reactive oxygen species by taking strong antioxidants and reducing inflammation and giving the, the, the ingredients that your cells need as cofactors to be able to improve the immune system. What I say in this video and, and most of my videos is gonna be the most important thing to prevent you from going down a road of high um, healthcare costs, right? You're reducing the probability of bad outcomes in health and it's the, it's the most informative it's the most coupling it's the most synergistic it's you know than any of these other clowns that are you know trying to copy what i do you know you know so thank you for listening please subscribe to all my channels Make sure you go to the store, the-studio-reykjavik.com and get the health products that I offer. Take my advice. It'll improve your health and you'll see an improvement relatively quickly. Now, the ones that are international that, that want to help support me, please donate on my, on my website, the-studio-reykjavik.com. At the bottom of the homepage, you can donate through Stripe or PayPal or you can donate through Buy Me A Coffee. The link is in the description of this video or subscribe to my Patreon account and, and uh, be a monthly subscriber there. Thank you for your help. Please share the videos and take my advice. If you follow the anti-aging protocol that I'm talking about, you're gonna be able to weather some of the things that we have recently seen, right? I'm trying to be generic, right? You know, some of the crises that we've recently seen, you know, in the last few years, but also um, you're going to see this just compound benefit of improving your health, improving, you know, osteoarthritis, improving your cardiovascular health, improving your mental clarity, um, adding energy. And, you know, just take my advice, proper diet, proper exercise. Challenge your brain, proper supplementation, proper sleep, and you will go very far in being able to improve your health. Thank you for listening and have a nice day.